Hello, good evening. So welcome to session. Be listening to the ear, right? All your music systems, everything which is related to ear. So we'll actually see that how inner ear to middle ear to even we'll talk about the inner layer and in detail, right? And uh, before we really start, so because this will be comprising of dissection as well as some of the images, right? In fact, we'll draw and I'll, I'll let you know that if you can really draw along with me, it will make your concepts much, much easier. Because see, in in our ear, there is very less of dissection because things are in the size of millimeter. So actually, if you, even if you break the bone, you try to take inner ear, middle ear, everything is crisp clean. But when we'll come to inner ear, we'll actually draw the things and that will make our concepts much better, right? All right. So before we really start the official disclaimer that all the images which are displayed during this medical training session they are for educational purpose only and not all these images they are suitable for audience of all ages and they are displayed or explained for medical education and address mature audience right so that's needed okay so here it is how will work right for the ear you must be comfortable with this part that is there is something like outer ear or external ear correct all these they have got their own speciality this is for direction of the sound right that's for the direction of of the sound this is where the mechanical systems will be coming into picture right so how the mechanical vibrations they are amplified and this is where we can say i always like to say that this will be like an electronic system right electronic system so that's how they are so we'll be talking about all these sections right first we pick up a very standard figure which is given in almost all the books Right. What we really want to see in this thing is only few things, then we'll keep on talking about in depth. So, okay. So, it's like this one. That's our tympanic membrane. Lovingly, we always call it as eardrum, right? Eardrum. So before that, this is external ear. Then all these cute bones, right? There are there will be three bones. Those bones they are comprising of a chamber that would be the tympanic chamber or the tympanic cavity. That will be the middle one. And the entire sophistication that is over here into the form of inner ear, right? So that's how things will go. This is our all time favorite that Eustachian tube or name which we gave to the tube, right? Okay, which balances the pressure between the nasopharynx and the and the middle ear. Okay. <clears throat> so with this introduction, let's start with the first one. Now over here, we'll be spending bit, bit proper time on this so that usually some of the concepts, they, they, they are very foggy, right? So we'll make it crystal clear that you need to know certain words, right? So this entire thing, all this is called as oracle, right? It is called as oracle. Now, way back right even teacher used to twist those ears but the moment it was released it was coming back to its original shape thanks to auricular cartilage so it means the framework the entire frame of the ear of the auricle is made by a cartilage and name of the cartilage is auricular cartilage right very appropriate name auricular cartilage 
girls would immediately say ki, yes there is cartilage but it is not over here right correct because there is no cartilage over here that is what is called as the ear lobe that's easy right so over here there is no cartilage all right as usual we always pick up easiest things first and that is like this so this would be like external acoustic meatus right that is external acoustic meatus hmm. now starts the things which are written now see the entire structure is designed in such a way that there is an outer prominent area and inner depressed area right depressed area depression means it is concave it is central so this is the central concave area fair enough so we'll write it like central and everything is actually very musical and and by the end of the session you'll appreciate that this central which is concave so this central concavity it is called as the concha right how beautiful so central concavity is con so if that is concha so then this outer one which is robust which is curved it is called as helix right it is called as helix so this is a big one that does this all this entire prominence right that is helix so if that is helix then the boundary right this boundary of concha this boundary of concha that is anti helix right that is anti helix what is left out well there are two things one if we if we just erase this right this one see there are two prominence one over here one over here right they are like two doors so this one is called as tragus tragus right which is a projection so then this one anti tragus anti tragus right so this concha concha was this right i'll just do it like this so that was concha and this is tragus and anti tragus session is lagging ah uh, dipendra dr swag nikita is it lagging even in your case just let me know let me check over here here it is showing excellent connection so it should not be anyway just let me know right whether it is lagging or it is going fine oh really little buffering for a few seconds time to time okay okay just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. give me a minute just a second Ah, uh, video is lagging or even sound is also lagging. Testing one two three one two three. Testing one two three. Is the sound continuously coming okay? Okay, okay. Chalo, uh, just let us. So here it is, like what we need to know. That is auricle, helix, anti helix, right? Tragus, anti tragus. and the concha right so these are the areas and these are that is what we need from this we move on to our dissections now we, here what we have done is we have removed the we have removed the external layer so in other words we can say that we have removed auricle right so this is external acoustic meatus right this is external acoustic meatus and suddenly we find that there is one more cartilage over here so this is the cartilage this is the cartilage 
which is meant for external acoustic meters. So that means we have got two cartilages. One cartilage which was for the auricle and second cartilage which is just for the external acoustic meters. That means our, our external acoustic meters, that is our entire external ear, it is not bony. It is a combination, right? Really? So let's go back. Yes, here it is. See, that's why what we say. See, this is bone, right? This one is bone. So that one is bone. And all these external, they are cartilage. So this one, this one, right? This one is one cartilage and this is another cartilage. So this is our auricular cartilage and this one is the cartilage which is around. This would be our external acoustic meatus. So that is our second cartilage. Well, I have spoiled the figure, <laughs> right? But you have understood. So let's make it clean because we'll be coming back to this figure again, again as needed. Okay. So here it is. Now we are going into that dissection, right? So external acoustic meatus and the cartilage. Now, see the direction is very important. It reminds me that in one of the, one of the movie, it was some Sarasa movie, right? The hospital was shown. Immediately you could make out that this is oh, both in audio and video. Uh -huh. Because over here it is showing absolutely okay. And uh, because otherwise it will start showing that those circles over here also on my secondary screen it is showing quite okay anyway let's see let's see please manage right i think problem over here to here it is showing me full 117 mbps upload okay so i was talking about <clears throat> i was talking about one one movie it was very bekar movie and hospital setup was definitely fake instantly you could know that because in the neurology department, it was written like neurology, right? Neurology is this, but who knows why someone who must have painted the board, he, he painted it like NVRO, neurology, right? I do have even screenshot of that movie. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the interesting thing is when uh, that hero, he was like a doctor, so he he was, see, he applied the stethoscope in a wrong way, ulta, right? And you know it very well that it won't be making. Oh, that is good. 240p, it's not lagging. All right. Okay, right? So, so in stethoscope, so we know that, that this, is, this is the direction. In fact, this is the direction, right? Going towards interiorly, right? So this is, this is one, this is one, this is two. That's the direction right that's the direction because if we if we wear it ulta right it won't fit so that's the direction of our canal from there it would take turn right so what we really watch over here over here that would be the tympanic membrane right that would be the tympanic membrane okay so here is now we go this is the cartilage right that's the cartilage this is just a zoomed version of the scene right? the cartilage of external acoustic acoustic meters moving further yes now see this is like now we are going deep right so to see these cartilages properly, what we are doing is we go back to the bones so that we make our concepts a bit more clear. This is just a zoomed version. Here it is. This is external. I will now write in short external acoustic meatus. And that's where the cartilage is attached. Right? That's the cartilage attachment. So here the cartilage is. Right? Meantime, this is say our temporomandibular joint correct and that's the mandible right this is the mandible see due to this due to this when we go for the 
a real dissection, right? This one is external acoustic meatus, right? And just in front, this is the temporomandibular joint. So in order to feel the condyle of the mandible, right? Interesting thing is when you put the finger, right? And put the finger ulta, right? Not like this. Put the finger ulta so that this space, right? The pulp of your finger, it is very sensitive, right? So it should feel the anterior wall of the mandible. So, so put the finger like this and open and close your mouth, right? Beautifully, you'll feel the condyle of the mandible, right? It is so interesting because when you feel it like you actually feel, yeah, superb condyle, right? It is moving up and down. So finger, right? In external caustic meatus, right? Anterior wall should be felt on the pulp of finger and then open and close the mouth, right? Once you do this and the, you will never forget the condyle of mandible. So nicely it is felt, right? As such, we try to feel it over here, right? We just put our finger and then open, close. Yes, it is felt, but when it is inside, it is felt best. You actually feel this shape. Actual shape. You feel that. Right? Okay. So, here it is. This is the first darshan of tympanic membrane. Deep, deep, right? And we'll keep on exploring so that we reach to that point. Right? Here it is. Now, this is a cartilage. Right now we cut the cartilage. Now it is not needed, so we start removing the structure. So we explore deep. Here it is. <coughs> so here it is. We we remove that to see it still better. Right, we are exploring. We are exploring the external ear. Right, so we cut this much bone. We don't want to cut straight away the entire bone and expose all the entire ear. Right, external, middle, and no. We are going step by step so that we see the structures and we'll actually create it. So we remove this part of bone, small part of bone and see what we have done. We have cut only that much bone where we can see this tympanic membrane nicely, right? This tympanic membrane nicely so that we have reached to that, that eardrum, right? That eardrum has been reached. So if it, this was the external cavity, right? This was the eardrum, we removed this portion of the bone. Right, so that now we can see it good. Now there is so much to see about it. So we zoom it. <coughs> Sorry. So we zoom it. Right. This is same. Same tympanic one. The moment we see first thing which is which is shown so nicely is that see there are two parts. One which is which seems quite thin. Right. This is in fact tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is thin so much so that it is partially transparent right this is partially transparent tympanic membrane the structure right? when you see so on on one side there is external ear on one side there is middle ear true on the external side right it is covered by covered by skin that's right it is covered by skin but on the posterior side or the side which is near to the middle ear there it is covered by mucus right so that's that's one important point still more zooming right we zoomed it still further when we do this thing we come across two parts Two things one what is what is above and second portion which is like which is like this right like a ring this above one above one that is pretty loose that is flaccid right so it is called as the pars flaccida right it is called as the pars flaccida flaccida means it is quite loose while this lower structure, rest of the structure, it is tense. So this is what is called as the pars 
tensor right so in other it is simple it is tense so it is this tense portion which vibrates right so it is this tense portion which vibrates on sound right it vibrates on sound now that sound which is vibrating right so the, here it is now the over here tympanic membrane so over here there are three bones right there are three bones malleus incus and stapes now, if you already know the name if you have already studied this topic well and good if not don't worry we'll actually see every bone individually so this first bone right which we call as the malleus right malleus they are also called as the auditory ossicles right ossicles means small bones so they are also called as auditory auditory because they are related to this audition auditory and this is these are called as the ossicles right malleus incus stapes so this is the first one which is malleus where is it this is external ear so that means it will be on the other side right but because this is transparent so that's why we watch something whitish over here like this 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 so it is this portion this portion where that malleus is attached right the malleus is attached in malleus the structure is like it is there is a long process and and that handle sort of thing is attached so actually it is called as handle right actually it is called as handle of malleus so this portion this portion where the malleus is connected right malleus behind right malleus behind it has got a very nice name ambo right it is its name is ambo so ambo is a place where the malleus is connected right this entire tympanic membrane is is sort of as if it is hanging right on on the entire side over here on its periphery there is connective tissue right so all the way yes right this is a connective tissue this is like a ring right it is like a ring ring so that's why anything which is like ring it is called as an annulus annulus right so this is ring of connective tissue so that's how our tympanic membrane is is at this point <clears throat> oh, yeah, Dipendra, you must have tried it. It's moving. Great. So, right. See here. This is slightly at an, at an another angle so that we can see this whitish structure. This one. That is that malleus. Right. And this one is Ambo. The name is interesting, so that's why you feel like speaking it again and again. So it is Ambo. Now over here we have done one more thing. We have removed a small portion of bone, right? So it is like over here, right? The bone is there. So this was removed, right? That bone was removed. So in our over here, see we removed that this much bone. And when we removed that bone, so this is external ear, and this one, this one is the tympanic membrane and now we are into this middle ear well we have reached into the middle ear right this middle ear is given a bit sophisticated name tympanic cavity right tympanic cavity otherwise means the same right? so tympanic cavity this tympanic cavity will be having all those bones now we really want to see that how it really looks like so let's cut <clears throat> let's cut this tympanic membrane to see that is it really so thin right so let's put this mark and cut it when we cut it and we see this see this is really thin right so thin so that's why it can really vibrate very nicely and this is the tumbo mm -hmm. the tumbo right and this one is that handle of handle of malleus right handle of malleus 
milliliters and inside is our that entire cavity fine so we have seen enough of uh, say tympanic membrane let's cut down the entire tympanic membrane right so we remove the entire tympanic membrane now what we are watching is we are watching straight away the first view of all the three bones right these are three ossicles right these are three ossicles one we have already seen that was malleus right second one it is called as the incus and third one it is called as the steps undoubtedly this is malleus right malleus is connected to that's that's incus that's incus and steps steps is the very deep though that small bone right which we'll watch but it has got tremendous importance so these are the three bones will reach to that bone huh. middle ear has got one another important thing middle ear that means that is it is connected to that eustachian tube or the auditory tube right for the that pressure balance this structure is so important that's why we'll be dissecting it all the way right we'll, we'll watch it very properly so this is where we'll be so this is like auditory or eustachian tube right it is also called as pharyngo tympanic tube right same name right pharyngo tympanic tube now as we'll expose this tube you will come across all those structures which we have already seen or talked about see this is this is the dip into into the auditory right and and this tube function of this tube is the pressure balance right so here it is right still we change the angle and see how nicely we are traveling all the way into that tympanic membrane or tympanic uh, uh, I mean auditory tube right all the way from the tympanic cavity now way back we talked about that this entire thing is is only partially bony rest is cartilaginous true so here say this is external acoustic meatus this is mandible now we don't need mandible right we remove the mandible so that we can actually see it properly this this mastoid process right muscular mastoid process that will be coming into picture right after some time it will be coming into picture because there are air cells they will be communicating okay right so let's remove the mastoid and now we, after removal of the mastoid we just see at an angle we see the base of the skull right we see base of the skull so this is external acoustic meatus right see the reference orient very properly this is the bone this bone right that will be covering that will be covering this this cavity right so let's remove this we remove that right this is styloid process all all those things they are in, very well right we remove that bone and see what we are watching external acoustic meatus right external acoustic meatus and see that very nice groove see the nice groove right this one i'll remove this thing now see this one right this groove if i zoom it see that's the groove Right. this is the groove for annulus that ring right so that's the groove for annulus that ring of connective tissue right which was getting connected over so this is how it is right. so let's explore still more so now what we are watching this is we are we are watching middle ear right we are watching middle ear there are some cavity we have there are no bones right now because this is a dry skull 
to see this thing bit more properly we just cut off this portion also now you must have guessed because that's this is the area from where the auditory tube will be going down right that's why we are cutting that structure to see that how how it actually goes so we just cut it right we cut it and we have exposed this right and this is where that auditory tube will be traveling right this auditory tube will be traveling all the way to nasopharynx True. same it runs forwards and medially because it has to ears they are laterally situated that pharynx is centrally situated so and and they are at a higher level so it will it will run forward and medially right so when we when it is said that the direction of auditory tube direction of auditory tube very logically it has to be forward and medially right it runs forward and medially as it goes see this this is the bone right? let's take a dark color red color that's where we are and this is this would be the path from here then it goes through that bony tunnel and it comes out comes out right so here this auditory tube auditory tube two parts one which was lateral right lateral one third lateral one third is bony and the medial two third every time we used to create that artificial artificial substance and we used to say that that ring like that ear bird like thing that was right that is the cartilaginous thing so that is cartilage what I mean to say is, is this, right? Now this is familiar, right? So this one is the medial two-third of auditory tube, right? And that is from where it will be opening into the nasopharynx, right? Lateral one-third bony, this one would be lateral one-third and it is bony. <coughs> okay. Now let's see it in real dissection, right? Where things would change completely. Orient yourself. This is side of the face, right? So this is side of the face. Easy thing. And that is over here, we have actually opened so many structures, right? So what we have done in this case, is this would be the orientation. This is where the zygomatic arch comes, right? So we have cut the zygomatic arch. We have cut the zygomatic. This is external acoustic meatus from here, right? Acoustic meatus. In fact, we have opened the tympanic cavity. Right? And then what we have done, so one, you know that zygomatic arch, right? That has been cut. If zygomatic arch is cut, we don't see the mandible. So yes, the entire mandible. So mandible is removed. Okay, then if mandible is removed, so surely muscles of mastication, so all those muscles of mastication, they are removed. The, the muscles of mastication, the common structure, our, our very favorite structure which is seen over here is that pterygoid plate, right? Very nicely seen. So this is lateral pterygoid plate. And because we have removed all the structures, so this is nothing but that nasopharynx, right? That's the nasopharynx which is lying over here. <clears throat> and from here, this is this is like tympanic cavity, right? That has been opened. So I think we need to zoom it to get a better idea, right? So let's do it. Here it is. See. Now it is fine. In this, this is the structure to focus this one, right? this one. Auditory tube, it is not seen directly and very easily, right? See, we zoom it still further, 
right now we are focused only on that it is this structure that is auditory tube this is auditory tube this is wide because it is cartilaginous right but it is hidden beneath two muscles and these are the muscles which are actually opening and closing it right as needed so one which is making it tense so this above small muscle right that is tensor palatine tensor palatine and another muscle just above that superior constrictor this one is levator palatine right levator palatine because these are the muscles which are actually affecting the auditory tube so if we really want to see the auditory tube properly we need to sacrifice those muscles right so that's what we now do we remove tensor palatine see we have removed tensor and levator palatine and see how nicely the entire tube is in front that's the tube but still it is fully covered we slit it open right we slit this open because it is it is cartilage right cartilage in this tube so this is cartilage so as such we know that it is it is like a tube but right now it doesn't look like that it is a tube so we just cut that right that means we are removing the removing the roof right and here it is here it is now it is it is actually the tube right see how nicely this is the middle ear right just keep this entire image in your mind this is the middle ear up to this point up to this point it is like bony right and then from here onwards it is the cartilage right it is cartilage and it is cartilage and that's how the tube is formed and it then goes into the nasopharynx right nasopharynx so this is like fully exposed very proper all the way the auditory tube right? okay to to see it in much better way like like we are we have taken one more section right the sagittal section so in this the common known structures right this is this is like say nasal cavity right below is the oral cavity correct so nasopharynx oropharynx and this is like soft palate correct soft palate so this one would be the nasopharynx this portion this is nasopharynx right and yes that's what we were watching that is the opening of auditory tube eustachian tube pharyngo very tube right so that's the tube right this is this is the opening right so that is on both the sides so normally this tube remains closed but when you swallow when you, you yawn right so at that point those tensor and the uh, uh, levator palatine they both work and they open the tube pressure balanced done right so that's the entire purpose okay so this was this was about that auditory tube now let's move to those bones right so this is the tympanic cavity or in other words it is the middle ear and with those those some bones right those bones are seen with bones ossicles but first we remove those ossicles we remove and this time listen carefully that's the that's the middle ear cavity we remove everything from middle ear and then we see that what are the walls and then one by one we start placing the structure and we will recreate it right so that's how we do so let's remove so those those are all bones right these are these are all bones let's clean it right ha huh, see these are the bones right malleus incus stapes 
and and so many structures it looks so complex right so we we would like to remove all of them right so these are also called as ossicles right see this is a zoomed version but we'll we'll come back to this figure this image so here it is completely cleaned in simple words ossicles bye bye right we removed those ossicles so what we are really watching we are watching we entered from external canal right external ear tympanic membrane came we removed tympanic membrane those malleus incus tapes came we removed that and we are hitting now the medial most wall and because once we'll clear this wall we'll be entering into the will be entering into the inner ear correct so here is there are two very fine windows right this is remember this is the medial wall this is the medial wall of middle ear right so this is a wall this is external this is middle and this is external this is middle this is inner and the wall which we are watching we are watching this wall right we are watching that wall so there are two windows as per the shape they will be given the names so one is here one is here right one is oval one is circular or the round so this is oval this is round right so that's the shape but well their functions they are different so this is also called as the vestibular vestibular window right these are windows or the openings but if we call this thing whole as wall so any opening into the wall is window so they are windows right so vestibular and the lower one is cochlear right lower one is cochlear cochlear is covered by a membrane right cochlear is covered by membrane it is also called as the secondary tympanic membrane right but but right now it is covered by a membrane that membrane is as such not that effective it is just for transmission of few specific vibrations where it is used this vestibular this is very important because this is this is the window where our dear steps would be connected right to transmit those vibrations right those those sound waves okay so this is that above if we go right so then we are going towards the dead end that is these are the mastoid air cells right these are the mastoid air cells right so it is going over there and below yes that we talked about this is auditory tube right that is the auditory tube which was there so things are now falling into its place one important thing is that say in between these two windows there is a bulge right so this is what is called as the promontory i'll tell you later when we'll be talking about inner ear that why this promontory just because of one tube right one semicircular canal because because it is taking turns so it is creating this prominence okay here there was one now in internal acoustic meters two cranial nerves they were going right in internal acoustic meters one was the facial right and second was this vestibular cochlear so num number seven and number eight so this seventh it will be working on all these areas it is the eight which was traveling it was i'm sorry it is eight which will be coming over here seven facial right the facial will be traveling via the bony canal and this is where it would pass so that would be the path of facial canal and in facial canal facial now would be traveling right so so far for the orientation let's move further now in this right, it's the same thing right you can use it for practice let's not spoil this image this is pretty easy and that's the cavity which we have opened right in into the bony skull and that's where we see right see this this is mastoid air cell these are mastoid air cells 
so mustoid has been opened and that's where from here it lands into middle ear right so th this is like a dead end these mustoid cells they are like dead end they, they don't go anywhere but they end it over here covered by cavity so just an extension creating the resonance lightening the size of the skull right okay so here is our first bone right in fact it is the third bone so that is malleus inca stapes this one is stapes right it has got one head end and second one so this one would be the base and then there are two crusts so this is what is called as the anterior crust and the posterior crust the important thing is that this tapes it is it is small it is pretty small steps is small but its importance is tremendous now if you see the base right this base is oval shaped right it is oval shaped if it is oval shaped to then it is meant for oval window right and we have already seen that where is that oval window right so that window oval window oval window we also call is a vestibular window right we are repeating few words again and again and you will see its importance when we will be talking about the inner ear. So, this is vestibular window, right? And that is where steps would be landing. So, base of the step would be landing and it will be covering this, right? So, the whole thing would look something like this, 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 and then, then there would be the head, right? Let us add the real steps. <laughs> That's the steps, right? That's the real steps. Here, here it is. See, this is the crust, right? So that's the steps. So movement of steps. When the steps is moving, right? It will push and pull that oval window, right? So that is what sets the sound vibration, right? And these sound vibration, then they are going into the perilymph of inner ear. Don't worry, inner ear we are coming to, right? So, but this is what really happens this is the steps okay quickly we add something to it we have talked about this words in fact our body's smallest muscle stapedius right you, you know we talked about this stapedius this is the smallest muscle right it is the smallest muscle things which are looking this big in this in reality they are so so small right they are like really very small the function of stapedius is to muffle the large sound whenever there is large sound right body automatically it's like a safeguard it will muffle it up it will, it will slow it, it it will soften it so how is it done this is the stapedius muscle right but as such this is like a tendon so I, I if i write muscle it won't be very correct so i'll write tendon which is over here right this is over here it is attached to the this is head right it is head because base is connected to that window so this is head and the belly belly is inside the bone right belly is inside the bone It is inside the bone. So that's how this stapedius, that muscle, it is it is taking care of this, right? So protection against large sound. Okay. Adding now. I think now we need see this is the zoomed part now this is unzoomed part right just for the orientation right see over here to see the steps we zoomed it right now this is unzoomed so there is the head of there is the head of stapedius that is the head of stapedius 
correct because size of the incus is bigger so now we'll put the incus into this right see over here this is going towards those maxillary air sinuses like they look like that huge cave right maxillary air cells yeah, they are going there that's where it is going to that auditory tube right and we add this see how beautiful this incus is right this is incus and where is that connected it is connected over there right see this this is this one is steps right so on the head of steps this is connected and one more thing keep in mind this area this this is a surface area that is the articular surface right this is the articular surface and it is this surface which will be connected to the malleus right and then there is on the posteriorly <clears throat> for the stability of this incus there is one ligament right ligament for stability that's the posterior ligament this is a posterior ligament of incus right it is connected to the wall so it is like wall ligament and the incus so that's how it is connected right so there has to be a center point from where it will be acting like a like a point from where that movements would occur and you'll find that there will be two more ligaments for the malleus and then they will be forming one central axis on on that central axis that the whole movement would occur right pretty scientific pretty interesting okay this is how an isolated incus would look like so this is the body and as we'll rotate right this is the anterior area this is the anterior side so from where then we'll see you'll find that it is the articular surface right this one is small and this one is large so short crust and long crust and then there is one thing you appreciate a prominent thing right this is called as lenticular process right this is what is called as the lenticular process importance importance is so much because that is what we'll be talking with steps that is where it would be connected right so that is the lenticular process which will be connected with steps huh. as we as we rotate so this is in front right? this is the articular surface that's the articular surface obviously big so it is for malleolus Malleus, why malleolus? <laughs> malleus, right? Not malleolus. Hmm. Now we have added that, right? So this is this is that handle of malleus. Malleus, that's the handle, right? And this malleus, this portion that would be connected with tympanic membrane and when the tympanic membrane is connected so on the outer side that prominence that is what is called as the umbo right so this will be the site of umbo umbo here and these are the two ligaments this is one this is two right these are the two ligaments is which are the ligaments of malleolus so anterior and posterior ligaments whatever ligaments of malleolus so this one and this one now interesting part is that both these ligaments they are into sing straight line and and behind also there was ligament for that incus all of them they they are into straight line so this will be the line which will be acting as in central axis and then the movements would occur so malleus and incus they move together so it is like if this is the central line right so these bones they move like this so 
on one side there is eardrum when the eardrum right like those speakers cone right when they vibrate so when the way tympanic membrane is vibrating so those malleus incus they are they are vibrating and that thing is transmitted to steps and steps via this that uh, that oval window is sending into the perilymph it is sending into the inner ear right So here is that malleus, right? I, now I'll not write malleus. And this one is the head, right? That's the head. And this is this is the handle. Right? So that's how it works. Here is just another angle. Right, and this is the articular surface. You just look it and you know that yes, this is that. So this is the articular surface, and it has to articulate with incus, no doubt about it, because it is the handle which is associated with with the tympanic membrane, right? Or the eardrum. Now, see, can you see this is one prominence, this is another one. So it is over here and over here. There was anterior ligament and the posterior ligament. So that's all. So now if you connect the ligament, then, then the whole bone would move like this, right? So that's how it, it moves even the incus. Right? Huh. So now it is crystal clear right see this is one ligament this is second ligament and that's that's how they move right and then the whole movement it occurs right? so that's the axis which is made up of ligaments just on another bit bit magnified view huh. If we are talking about stapedius, right? Say deep, here is the stapedius, right? Stapedius, who is taking care of that, that steps, right? So it keeps a check on, check on steps. If that's what it is done for such a small bone, then there has to be something for a bigger bones, right? And that is tensor tympani, right? And that tensor tympani is here. See, beautiful, right? This tensor tympani. And this muscle is so notorious, tensor tympani. This muscle, what you are watching, very fine, right? See, very fine, white, nice. It's tendon is seen right the the belly is in fact it is into the bone it is into the bone right it is and and over here over here what is what is going on that is the auditory tube right so it is just above and parallel to the auditory tube so watch right it is just above and that's the belly belly of Tensor tympani. Right? That's the belly. And he will keep a check on check on malleolus. Ah, uh, malleus. Right? He'll keep a check on malleus. So this is this is like malleus. Uh, tensor tympani and stapedius. Both the ends they are keeping a check. Right? So that's how the protection against large sounds. Okay. Now comes a very beautiful structure. So delicate and so nice. This one, you see something which is going like this, passing between malleus and incus, and then all the way it is going into the bony skin. Right? Friends, this is nothing but called a tympani right called a tympani so nice right see see in its original see that's the now that's the now. 
This is called a tympani. And you know it so well that called a tympani, it is branch of fascia. Right? Branch of fascia. But fascia said, okay, go and meet lingual. Lingual will take you to tongue. Right? And then you get all the taste sensations from the tongue. Right? So, it will carry all those taste sensations and that's how corda tympani is arranged. Right? It is passing between this is incus, this is malleus. So, it is passing between both of them and then going all the way to meet lingual. Right? So, that is how it goes. Okay. This takes us to now the inner ear. Now what I had done is this figure, this figure after every 2-3 pages I have kept this figure right, so that you are properly oriented because from this point onwards we would like to draw certain images. Though image all these are there but when we draw with the, our hand the concepts will automatically start building because the size of this entire thing is in millimeters. Right? It is in millimeters. It is so small. Such a small structure. So that's why we would try to draw it. Right? So you also just keep two or three color pen or pencil. Right? That would be very helpful. And just one page. Just one page. And start drawing as big as possible. Take the full page. Right? I'll keep on drawing. Now this thing is also called as the labyrinth. Right? Or the inner ear is a common. But this is the scientific name it is what is called as the labyrinth right or the inner ear now this inner ear inner ear <coughs> this whole thing is in petrus temporal correct so that was the reason that petrus temporal was looking so heartless right such a strong shape because this is the structure which is inside the function of this is one, it will take care of the sound, but the second function is so good, it is the balance. And yes, we'll be talking a bit more in detail about the balance because it is so crucial. So, first thing first, one, two, three, right? We mark this. These are the three areas which we'll be discussing. This first one, This first one, round, 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 round. So, this is called as the cochlea, right? This is called as the cochlea. Main function, auditory, listening, auditory. That would be the main function. This second one, second one is what is called as the vestibular, right? All these structures will be drawing, will be discussing. Right? So this vestibular, vestibular is for balance, is for balance. But when, when you are stationary, when you are standing, right? Standing or stationary, you are not moving. At that point, it is for balance. And the third one, and this third one, These are all semicircular canals, right? Because they are they are all half canals, so we'll call them semi circular canals. Now from this point onwards, we'll start telling them SCC, semicircular canals, right? So that we don't have to write more. And they are for again they are for balance, but do remember, right? Do remember, you must have guessed that for balance but when we are in motion when we are moving at that point right so we'll actually see that how all these things they come into picture over here easy to see easy to figure out this is the now this is this is the now this one right that is like our vestibular cochlear so we'll write it and this is the nerve which will be going into its own canal 
So that's why it is not coming into picture because it will not be gen giving any supply to any of the organ. But only thing is it is the accompanying. So that's why this is seventh which we have cut and we have kept it aside. Done. Right. Now let's start the all the structures right of this. Now, when we when we talk about inner ear, right, straight away, if you want to harass someone, right, you want to harass someone, right, start your presentation like this. That okay, we'll be discussing, right, without any introduction, we'll be discussing scala vestibuli. We'll be discussing scala tympani. By that time we'll finish. You see how how dangerous it looks. We'll be talking about cochlear duct. Right? We'll be talking about Reasoner's membrane. Then there would be discussion on basement membrane. Right. And if this was less. So then we'll be talking about helicotrema and then organ of corti and then semicircular canals, right? But this is in our menu. This is what we'll talk, right? Look so scary, right? So many things. This is nothing but inner ear. Now, one method is straight away we, we take a figure and we start telling this is this, this is this. No, that is not the fun, right? Let's let's draw it, right? And, and we draw it in our own style. Very easy. And one image on one page will not draw more so that we know it properly. First, we'll start with cochlea, right? Cochlea. I think I must have put one or figure just, just high. Here it is, right? So, this is cochlea. This is the, this was third or first, whatever, whatever. Let's forget about this is cochlea, right? This is cochlea. So let's go back. Draw the cochlea <clears throat> exactly like this. Like this, right? And then right in the middle, Right, it goes, it divides like this. So it means there is a bony structure which is going round, and in between there is one canal. And that canal, that duct is nothing but cochlear duct. Cochlear duct. Right. So it's like say this is the road this is the road and in between in between they grow all those right plants and trees etc so thus dividing the road into two parts so this is almost like that they have planted tree on cochlear duct right so the road has been divided into two parts right makes sense the only thing is this road is circular so now this portion right there is one portion which is this. Correct. So I'll remove this right, so that you get that idea. That, that, so I'll write it like this. This one, there is name. So that is scala vestibuli. Right. And there was only one scala left out. We'll use a different color, right? This one is scala tympani. So this is scala tympani all the way, and this one is sorry. This one is scala vestibuli right all the way and in between is the cochlear 
got it right so here it is the cochlear duct which is going on over here it is the vestibuli and over here it is tympani tympani same thing like this right here it is vestibuli here it is tympani and this is the cochlea the only thing road is taking turn right road is taking turn but that's it now they, we need to create some fencing right we need to create some fencing so it, that fencing that is what is coming between this this so let's mark the, between all the way so what we have done we have created a layer right we have created a layer which is between scala vestibuli and the cochlea duct right this red thing so that is that red is reasoner's membrane that red is Reasoner's membrane, and this will be having that organ of quality because that is the portion which is for hearing. So we say that okay, this is for hearing. Right. Similarly, there will be one more membrane. There will be one more membrane, and that membrane would be between. Scala tympani and and the cochlear duct, right? And it is going all the way. And what name should be? There is only one membrane left out, right? Only that basic membrane which is left out. This is the basement membrane. This is the basement membrane. So done, right? So now we know out of all those structures yes 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 it will come right secular trickle all those that their, their common chambers then their nerve supply right how they distribute your your superior inferior vestibular ganglia their specific nerves giving to specific chambers right all those things come hang on right it will come right now we are into cochlea right that thing will come higher right that thing will come into vestibule that secular and uh, utrical okay so that's it so how many things we have settled we have settled right scala vestibuli scala tympani cochlea duct reasoner's membrane basement membrane this much though is done right okay helicotrema all right it is so easy see both these roads they will be meeting at one point right both these roads right both these roads they meet at one point and then there is a small gully in between so same thing over here all the way right all the way all the way this will right come come like this 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 it will come come over here and then over here the scala tympani will come right all the way goal 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 right it will come here 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 and so then this is a junction this is a junction that is like a small slit where they both will meet and this is nothing but helicotrema right so even that is done so it was not that complex right <clears throat> Now this cochlea duct, right, as we said, because it is in the middle, so everywhere it was scala, scala, right? Anything which is going into circles, it is called scala, right? So over here it is also called as the scala. If in case if someone asks, it can also be called as scala media. Scala media, something because it is into center, central position. <clears throat> okay. Now let's see what how how it will be working now as they go round and round and round 
right? We say that this helicotrema is like a junction. Right? Now, all these are filled with fluid, right? All these are filled with fluid and this fluid is called as the perilymph. Perilymph fluid. Why fluid? Because when that from oval window, right? When then that stapes would be hammering, right? When it will be hammering, it will be generating those mechanical signals into the electrical signals. And those electrical signals, how they will be generated? Because they will be specific cells, hair cells, right? When they will move, so they will start generating the signals. So that's how things will really move. So this is into that perilymph fluid. Now we take another page. Say this is scala tympani, right? Scala tympani. So scala tympani, as we said, that it will be going all the way the outside, right? So this scala tympani, right? It will go go and it will terminate where? It will terminate at the round window round window now you remember round window right say let's say there was oval window there was round window right so that scalar tympani it will terminate over here right that's scalar tympani because function scalar vestibular that is the function its function is for the auditory right so this scalar vestibuli that would be terminating on the oval window and it is this on oval window the steps is there right so here this is like middle ear and this is the inner ear and this is that junction and this is the reason because scalar tympani is not into that hearing part so that's why this is just covered with one just covered with one membrane that is the round window, right? So just keep in mind, this is the round window. It is the oval window which would be operational and oval window is with vestibuli, right? So this is, this is done. One another interesting fact is that this, we talked about this helicotrema. Helicotrine. This helicotrine near that we said that that is the point where they both meet. Now there are hair cells, we just talked about it, right? Those hair cells, those hair cells which actually convert it into the electric signal, right? So here the these hair cells near this they are very sensitive, they are very sensitive to low frequency sound. Low frequency sound. Low frequency sound is what? In simple words, right? When we increase the bass, right? Dug, 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 right? That, that sound effect, that is the low frequency sound. So that entire effect, which we feel that that, that speaker is giving punch on your, on, on your body, right? That effect is actually getting appreciated. At that time, you should say thank you, helicotrema, right? It is because that area which has got those super sensitive hair cells which will be carrying low frequency sound because they represent the best, right? So in other words, bass effect or the drum effect. Right? Or in some serials, those rakshas, ha ha ha, right? The way they laugh, all those things, they are effectively generated by helicotrema. <laughs> okay. So this takes us to the second part now, right? We talked about cochlea. Now we come to, so this, this, now we come to this part. <clears throat> Sorry. The vestibule, right? We come to the vestibule. Vestibule is like a vessel, is like a container. In this container, there will be so many things, right? So that's what we'll see now. 
<clears throat> and see in vestibule so I mean some small things right this is one and on top of it there is something bigger right and this cochlear duct though it is always all time nice right it is traveling so bus these are the things which will now watch so here it is back to our own image right so here we saw that vestibule right in that vestibule there are two pouch right there are two pouch one is the smaller pouch second is the bigger pouch right and see seriously this thing is so musical again right it is the smaller pouch which is called as the secule right which is carrying sensory cells these cells they are meant for orientation in space this orientation in space it is called as the spatial sensation or the spatial orientation say if you are into apple music right, or any of the apple phone means i'm not advertising iphone but it is like most of the, they are converting almost most of the musics into the spatial sound system the difference is that there was there was one thing which was mono that means both the things right and left they are playing same then came stereo right where you differentiate between this is right channel left channel then 2.1 3.1 5.1 all those things the spatial audio is that when you as per the frequency you start splitting the sound in such a way so that it won't look like that this this singer or this drum is is being played in right channel or left channel no it would feel like that drum is over here right singer is over there and that clarinet is is playing over here so that it is like you'll feel as if you are sitting in the middle of orchestra and everyone is playing around you and then there is very one fine video they have they have put that one by one they they keep on switching on the channels and then you feel suddenly that is that aha factor go oh, wow right all those songs even those olden songs right all those old songs they have started converting into this partial audio system right okay so this is this is our small secule sensory space special what's that it is this one it is this one it is this one right let's let's mark it fully this is secure it is this area which will be taking care of all these things right now let's add something to it what it does is it gathers sensory information about linear movement that is anything which is into the vertical plane right with respect to head so it with respect to head everything would be counted that whether whether the person is lying whether the person is standing right so with respect to head it will tell that what is the orientation of the body with respect to head so that's why this gives what's called as the spatial orientation with respect to head how are you placed right now now the second portion right this is this is called as secule right secule ke upar right if this is the secule right deliberately i said it in hindi right otherwise say my memory is bad i used to forget so i remembered it like a secule ke upar right and actually i wrote it like that that secule ke upar right there is utricle so now there is no problem right so secule ke upar is utricle utricle is big so that's why we said that this is small because in relation to that so this is big right and then it has got its specific function right so we'll see that one thing 
where exactly when we say that uh, this this uh, vestibule right this vestibule it is in the middle right but if you see the layer right so it is it is like this top view is cochlea in between is this vestibule and posteriorly these are semicircular canals so this is just the orientation that where exactly are we right now we are over here we are talking about vestibule in that vestibule there is small small secule right so this is now proper oriented now we move on to the next one so as we said that that small secule right it is sensory space partial orientation with respect to head right in simple words let's add one more thing standing straight right so musical right so standing straight so when you are standing straight right that's what it is happening right and definitely then you look smart so that is right so this is how it really works let's add something to this see this is cochlear duct right now now your orientation is quite good so this is the cochlear duct right? and that was the secule in between there is canal right and that canal is called as canal of i remembered it like murgi ka bachcha right so it is like i remembered it like even in my notes i used to write like this right and then like this so hen sun but the spelling is h e n s e n right it is the canal of henson so that's how this secule secule thing works let's move to now utricle so this if this was secule on top of it that is utricle this is utricle right utricle is larger sure that's why this was smaller and larger is more what's the size 3 mm oh wow right this is this 3 mm is larger right it is 3 mm in diameter so this is larger so bichara secule must be so small and both of these we said that they are pouch right they are pouch so this was the first pouch so then this is the second right so we can say this is like first pouch and this one is the second pouch now this utricle it connects to one important thing and it would go and who was behind semi circular canals but that's the key point that's the key point that will go to connect to semi circular canals so what would be the function of utricle it is superb now till this point you are standing now start running right now start running when you are running that means your linear acceleration as you pick up the speed right so it detects two things right in in other words you just right running everything comes into that right running so one it is called as the linear acceleration you know the difference between speed and acceleration right acceleration means change in the speed either you are increasing the speed or you are decreasing the speed right acceleration or deceleration so it it detects that that as you acquire speed yes it is because your utricle is telling hey, yes yes he is running running right and then with respect to when the movement is there right so it when the it it will take care of the tilting of the head right so when you are running so it is taking care of that tilting of the head and with respect to that it will take care of the body right the rest of the body will be going into its balance for both these things there are special cilia right those cilia every time those cilia they will be sending the message 
right so these are the cilia they are called as the kinocilia right kinocilia for the movement stereocilia which is for the balance so they will be sending specific signals that yes the person is running with proper balance or tilting on one side right all those things so that's the function of utricle right so interesting so that's the utricle let's add something more into this now this utricle will go all the way to semicircular canals right see so here here it is this one was secure right on top of it the big structure that big structure right that was utricle and this one this junction was our favorite helicotrema right and all those canals in in between this is the cochlear duct which is going right and scala tympani and scala vestibula this is scala vestibula right going and this one outer one is the scala tympani okay so now we talk about this third portion this one and they are semi circular canals right let's make it easy it looks so tricky but step by step let's make it easy first thing we are talking about semi circular canals right this semi circular canal first we understand that they are bony canals oh yes right they are bony canals so where are they they are into petrous temple so bony canal so everywhere the bone and in between these are the canals yes and in these canals that cochlear duct is running yes right that's how things would be so let's draw one and then we keep on adding on it fair enough right so first one these are semi circular right so like this right double so like this this is right in front so we'll call this call this as anterior semi circular canal right now this is the only portion where you have to focus and you have to imagine it right this is the direction so this is for vertical orientation right i'll keep on writing those keywords in capital if you remember this it's more than enough right it is vertical the size is actually so small right these are very small so this is perpendicular to petrous temporal so imagine what what must be the size right right it is there into petrous temporal that petrous temporal was bichara itna sa bone and that it is this small is standing and it is vertical and we call this as anterior semicircular canal yes it is like that right it is like that now add something to this expand it expand it their ends are expanded when the ends are expanded so that is called as ampulla that is called as ampulla now this ampulla is bony ampulla correct so it means that bone itself is is into that shape so it is bony ampulla but matter is not ending over there right there is some soft tissue also and that is what is called as the membranous ampulla right let's see that figure to make it ha huh, here it is now appreciate this right see this one this this is anterior right this one is anterior this one right don't worry about that why it is mixing over here all those things would come right now just let's understand this right so this is anterior this expanded portion over here right expanded portion that is ampulla right and inside also there is see that uh, utricle is going over there and getting connected correct so that is membranous ampulla so it means we have got the bony ampulla 
and then then that fluid filled it is this membrane ampulla. And whenever we talk about membrane ampulla, <clears throat> there is only one thing, and that is it is for angular acceleration and deceleration. Angular, right? When it is vertical, right? Then it is fine. But this is for angular. So membrane ampulla, which is over there, it is for angular acceleration. When I say acceleration, it is both way. acceleration plus or minus. That is acceleration or deceleration, both of them. <clears throat> this thing is aka also known as crista, crista ampullaris. Right? This is collectively, it is called as the crista ampullaris. Joint name. So that means every tube at the end there will be crista ampullaris and wherever the these this thing will come. So if the tube is taking care of the vertical orientation, so those those uh, crista ampullaris will be taking for same angle but for the angular acceleration or deceleration, right? It will take care of angular. So this is one that is that is like anterior semicircular, right? Now same way we'll be able to go much faster now because now the orientation is good so this is like there will be lateral semicircular canal lateral semicircular canal so it is lateral so it is like this if it is like this so it is transverse right it is into transverse plane right so that's where it will be taking care of right or left movement so when we are rotating the head right so it is for right or left rotation right head movements so when we do it like this right so then that is that is for the lateral circular again even in lateral semicircular canal there would be lateral membranous ampulla and as we said lateral and membranous with or, and that is crista ampullaris right so that that again that crista will be taking care of angular movement right so when we do this or do this so that is that angular movement that is taken care of lateral one yeah. third one is the posterior semicircular canal right posterior and this is for the coronal plane so when we do like this right so this is the coronal plane right so then so that anterior or posterior bending that is what is taken care by posterior and again in this also same thing right i am just writing over here and writing posterior so posterior membranous ampulla will take care of the angular movements right same thing right same for everyone now there are some exceptions small small exception not very big but just interestingly small anterior and posterior lateral one to is bichara very sida sada so small one right won't be doing much this is anterior right this is anterior so and this one is posterior right or let's let's draw it posterior like like this right then we, then we can draw lateral this way so this is anterior semicircular canal this one is posterior semicircular canal both of them they will be having a common cross right this is like they are having common membranous cross so this will be this crista ampullaris is for both of them it is one so that is common crista ampullaris right 
and that is what will open directly into utricle. So this is important that anterior and posterior on the anterior aspect they have got their separate crista ampullaris but on the other side this is common on the posterior side this is common want to see this right here it is here it is now we remove this see perfect that's what we are talking about this is the portion the, uh -huh. This is the portion which we are talking about. See the common one. This is common where both of them meet. For the anterior, though, they see they are they are having their own path, right? So this is one. The next one, which is for lateral, right? For this one, lateral one, it is very easy. Its posterior end. That means this is the posterior end. Its posterior end is just there is bony crust. There is no fluid right so this thing won't be opening into the utricle bus that's the thing so i will write it like this that the lateral semicircular canal it's posterior end right? because anterior end so it is there because otherwise so it won't be creating any balance right this is only bony grass right this is the thing so it will open simply into vestibule it won't open into utricle right? because utricle is like that pouch which is fluid filled and it is that which is going into this entire posterior even lateral but one end becomes the dead end this lateral semicircular canals posterior end that becomes a dead end right because there is just a bony part Now we finish the topic by talking about nerves. They are really very interesting. That that's why we divide it into two parts. One easier one, the cochlear nerve, right? Very easy. Cochlear nerve. Cochlear nerve. So this is branch of that vestibular cochlear, right? And it will be carrying what? It will be taking care of those auditory sensory information, right? So this is for the auditory sensory information that's what it would be carrying out and in this case there would be like say organ of corti which is a super specialized structure for the hearing right that will be into that membrane and that's where it will start converting and sending the second one which is like a vestibular nerve right and we saw that that in there are separate foramen for vestibular part and the cochlear part vestibular which is important for that spatial orientation right for the spatial orientation now in this there are specific hair cells right vestibular hair cells so secule utricle right those semicircular canals semi circular canals right they will be taking care of these say orientation but in the floor of that internal acoustic meters right so there was internal acoustic meters in internal acoustic meters those both of them they were entering that facial and the and the vestibular cochlear right immediately vestibular cochlear right there they were dividing cochlear will say you i'm going my way you go your own way it is at that point there would be one ganglia that is what is called as the vestibular ganglia this is what is called as the vestibular ganglion and this vestibular ganglion which is in the floor of internal acoustic meters now story is not ending here right it's not ending here that vestibular co vestibular cochlear ganglion right immediately there are it gives another one superior and inferior right now see this is this is like a very superb electrical system 
the way we have got trips which is for every room so in case if anything happens electricity of one room goes right but rest of the rooms they are having proper proper electricity because everything is distributed so same thing over here right these are like all those relay switches as such ganglia i always feel they are like relay switches right so here it is now that superior vestibular ganglia what it will do it will take it'll say okay i'll take care of few things you take care of other things now the superior one right so superior right so it'll say i'll i'm superior right so utrical which was upper so he'll say i'll supply that right in secule anterior part i'll take care okay then semicircular canal he'll say okay, i'll take care of that anterior right then what is left out what is left out is the inferior so again say utrical he'll say okay, utrical to has been taken by that superior ganglion okay okay then let's start with secule so okay secule what is left out will say posterior part so okay it will say okay, i'll take care of the posterior part then regarding semicircular canal so will say okay, i'll take care of that posterior one right will say okay, i'll take care of that posterior semicircular canal all right that is also done suddenly lateral one would start crying that where am i so this superior one will say okay, oh, no problem right you come here right you are a choti si canal so i'll supply so that is how it is taken care of so that's how these two ganglia they distribute now comes their super fine connections right for that we'll we'll see we'll see this every time i'll, I'll draw it right so here it is this is this is like superior ganglia and this is inferior ganglia right and in from superior ganglia for the anterior one right there goes one branch all the way over here this is for the anterior semicircular canal the anterior crest right this is the anterior crest so that is what is called as the anterior ampullary now getting the idea this is what is called as the anterior ampullary now that is specially going for all these canals right so that's how the distributions will be coming right just few right so once we'll draw once we'll write it will become much easier so first thing first we are starting with superior vestibular vestibular ganglia right we are giving respect superior vestibular g right so first branch first branch see the name anterior ampullary right so musical ampullary now it gives to anterior crest of anterior semicircular canal done right first branch done now there was there was one more right it said okay, i'll take care of anterior it it said i'll take care of that uh, lateral one also everything ditto same right the name of the track right so why to write also right let's make it easy name of the track lateral so lateral ampullary now that would be the name it will be supplying anterior crest of lateral semicircular canal clear right this is what we are talking about here it is this one is this one is anterior this one is posterior this one is lateral for lateral see a very nice branch this is going right so that is lateral ampullary now right 
so here it is it is lateral ampullary nerve fine and and similarly because we are here so we just finished that right there would be this is inferior one so inferior one is sending to posterior ampullary so this is what is called as this branch right this branch let's get it in this branch it goes all the way so this is what is called as the posterior posterior ampullary now so posterior ampullary now from inferior ganglion will be going to anterior one right anterior ampullary crest of posterior semicircular canal right so over here we write here only so that there is no confusion right so this is from inferior vestibular ganglion right this will be going for posterior one so that's why it will be called as the posterior ampullary now what it will be doing it will be giving or the supplying to every time it is anterior crest right so it is anterior crest or that bony prominence which was over there and inside there was membranous to off the posterior semicircular canal because these names they are with respect to which semicircular canal they are supplying right so that is how it is going one last thing which we add and it is done that superior would say that i'll be giving to utricle so he'll say okay, okay baba then give the name utricular now right what else utricular now so then he can also boast that yes i am giving secular this is secular now right because it will be giving to secular secular so that is so when we see the branches it will be the ventricular now anterior ampullary now and the lateral ampullary now right when it will come for the inferior one it would be the it would be the posterior posterior and the secular now right all these nerves that is what we saw image is there here it is right so here it is this one this one this is secular and one which is going above that is the utricular now right done all these branches right so we just write it like this so that is secular and this one is utricular right and that's it right done so this was outer middle and inner ear right thank you so much and so does all anterior posterior lateral move function for angular extension or it is only anterior one well it is it is say for the angular one say this is the you pick up any one right let's say this is anterior semicircular this area it is taking for angular one that is what is taking care for the angular movement right because they are at a junction they are at a junction so otherwise those who are absolutely like that so they are strictly on to their say vertical orientation but those who are at a junction they they do have some flexibility for moving so they are for angular part right all of them all of them everyone's say this junction which is the dilated part that is the ampulla that is for the angle ampulla is for angle ampulla for angular right again musical
all right thank you so much and see you tomorrow good night bye bye yeah saving this and then putting it into our shared folder